In November of 1758, 2,000 British soldiers under the command of General John Forbes took control of Fort Duquesne, a French fortification originally built at the beginning of the French and Indian War. The Iroquois and Delaware tribes were promised possession of the lands west of the Allegheny Mountains if they agreed not to interfere with the fight between the English and the French. Knowing that they were alone in the fight against the British, the French abandoned Fort Duquesne. With the French defeated, the British were now in control of the Forks of the Ohio. In a formal proclamation dated December 1, 1758, Forbes named his new post Pittsburgh after British Prime Minister William Pitt. In the following summer of 1759, General John Stanwix and his men began construction on Fort Pitt, which would help solidify the British presence in western Pennsylvania. Fort Pitt itself was completed in 1761 and consisted mainly of earthen construction with the majority of its ramparts and walls made up of dirt with sawed bricks laid over them. While it was designed to withstand bombardment from cannon attacks and would-be besiegers, the fort would be vulnerable to flooding and suffer considerable damage from the floods of January 1762 and March 1763. According to the fort's commander, Colonel Henry Bouquet, the water came upon us through the drains, gate, and sally ports, and boiled in large springs out of the ground in several parts of the fort. All the sod work done last year, and a great part of the year before, tumbled down upon the piquettes, and a good deal of earth washed away. In the spring of 1763, Pontiac, in Ottawa from near Detroit, united the western tribes to drive the British from their lands. They had already overwhelmed the outposts at Prestique Isle, LaBeouf, and Venango by the time they had reached Fort Pitt. The Native American besiegers were so confident of victory that they had brought their wives and children to aid in the carrying away of loot. By the beginning of August, most of the British provisions were gone. On August 10th, Colonel Bouquet had set out with reinforcements to relieve Fort Pitt from attack. His victory at Bushy Run, located east of the fort, would result in the lifting of the months-long siege. With the Indian uprising at an end, Pittsburgh started to expand. However, the fort itself suffered from neglect. Colonel Bouquet initiated construction of a small number of redoubts, or small defensive fortifications, to aid in the protecting the structure from future attacks. In 1764, he built a pentagonal brick blockhouse between the Monongahela and Ohio bastions from which sharpshooters could fire upon attackers approaching by way of the moat. Also called Bouquet's Redoubt, the blockhouse never saw a siege like that during Pontiac's Rebellion. After the British decommission of the fort in 1772, Bouquet recommended that the fort be converted into a trading post. The post was operated by Alexander McKee, an important early figure in Pittsburgh history. McKee would use the blockhouse as a council room for meetings with tribal dignitaries. In 1775, the Revolutionary War had officially begun, and Fort Pitt became the Western headquarters for the Continental Army. Not everyone at Fort Pitt was a supporter of the American cause, however. British Loyalist sympathizers were prevalent in some families, ethnic groups, and regions. The blockhouse continued to operate as part of the trading post until 1778, when Alexander McKee fled from Pittsburgh as a British Loyalist. It was then used by the garrison for the Continental Army. In 1783, the American Revolution was successfully over. Pittsburgh had expanded to such an extent that it seemed unnecessary for such a fort to continue to keep protecting the community. By 1785, the demolition and selling of Fort Pitt had begun. However, the blockhouse had survived the demolition as it was being used as a residence. In 1792, Fort Pitt was officially decommissioned by the United States Army. By an agreement made with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Penn family retained ownership of the Forks of the Ohio. The Penns then sold the property known as the Point to Isaac Craig and Stephen Bayard, former officers in the Continental Army. Craig and his family began to occupy the blockhouse as a residence. By 1789, the Craig family moved out of the blockhouse, once again leaving it vacant. Over the next hundred years, it would be home to families of all different sizes, classes, and backgrounds. During the 19th century, the point became one of the poorest and most densely populated areas in all of Pittsburgh. The blockhouse was one of many tenement houses at the point during this time. Sarah Aunt Sibby Powers 
lived on the first floor where she operated a candy store out of her window. She was vacated from the property in 1894 and in exchange for being displaced, she was given the equivalent of one month's rent between four and five dollars. She would be the last tenant of the blockhouse. In 1894, philanthropist Mary Shenley presented the deed to the blockhouse to the Daughters of the American Revolution, free of charge, in hopes that the structure and its history would be preserved for many generations. Going on to say, you are to preserve and keep this relic of a bygone past, and to gather and preserve all obtainable history and tradition in regard to it, and you are to beautify and adorn it, and to make it the receptacle of relics bearing on the colonial and revolutionary periods of its existence. The Daughters of the American Revolution would then embark on 16 months of restoration, primarily focusing on the infilling of the window and door openings cut into the blockhouse during its century-long use as a residence. In 1902, industrialist Henry Frick purchased the land surrounding the blockhouse for use by the Pennsylvania Railroad. He then offered the Daughters of the American Revolution $25,000 to move the blockhouse to Shenley Park. They refused and immediately took legal action to secure their property and prevent the streets leading to the property from being removed. Five years of legal litigation would follow until May of 1907 and the passage of the Edith Ammons Bill becoming state law, saving the blockhouse from destruction. Unfortunately, the law did not prevent other encroachments by the railroad and the blockhouse become surrounded by an industrial site. After World War II, the state of Pennsylvania funded what would become Point State Park. Constructed throughout the 1950s and 60s, it was part of a larger plan for urban renewal in Pittsburgh. In 1969, the Fort Pitt Museum is open to the public. The blockhouse has stayed standing during this construction and remains one of the main attractions at the park. To preserve archaeological remains and promote historical research, the Fort Pitt Society commissioned various archaeological digs and surveys to be conducted at the blockhouse over the past 120 years, most recently in 2003 and 2013. The 2003 dig focused primarily on the interior of the structure, on the ground levels below the first floor. The process yielded thousands of artifacts from prehistoric eras through the end of the 19th century including glass, ceramics, children's toys, tobacco pipes, bone tools, and a pendant made from a bear's tooth. The 2013 dig, which focused primarily on areas adjacent to the blockhouse, happened in conjunction with the approaching 250th anniversary of its construction. Concerns were raised to the structural integrity to the foundation and walls, the condition of the timbers, and what was needed to do to restore the blockhouse so that it would continue to last for future generations. In January of 2013, the Fort Pitt Society launched a 10-month preservation and restoration project, providing much needed repair to preserve the structure. Sections of the structure were examined by x-ray, and portions of the rotting wood were filled with epoxy or replaced. Damage to the brick and masonry, as well as the French drain, were repaired and floor beams supporting the second floor were reinforced by steel braces. 2013 also saw the opening of the Edith Ammon Memorial Garden that was planted around the perimeter of the blockhouse. Edith Ammon was a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution who led the fight against Frick as the railroad industry was encroaching on their rights to keep and maintain the blockhouse at its original location. She would petition the state senate to protect historic structures from eminent domain saying, have you no history? Have you no pride? Men who allow this precious spot to be sacrificed certainly have no pride at all. If these historic sites are destroyed, nothing but written pages will be left to tell their memory. Future generations will want to see them. We should not deny them that opportunity. She passed away in 1919 while serving as the head of the Fort Pitt Society. Her memorial, located in the garden, is set on a plateau of bluestone featuring an etched rendering of Fort Pitt as depicted in 1795. Not only is the blockhouse the only surviving structure from Fort Pitt that still exists today, it's the oldest authenticated structure in western Pennsylvania and is part of the National Historic Landmark of the Forks of the Ohio. Most of its architectural fabric remains intact and that the stone foundation, bricks, and timber are mostly original to its 1764 construction. 
It's the only true authentic remnant left to remind us of Pittsburgh's earliest history. It reminds us that just as 200 years ago, as Pittsburgh was the leaping off point to the frontiers of the West, Pittsburgh remains the leaping off point, now to the frontiers of technology and medical advancements that will shape the nation's future.